future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Dr. Judy here of Dr. Judy WTF, What the Freud? And tonight we are going to be truly looking at a What the Freud, which is how we treat our animals. The topic of today is how we treat our animals being a reflection of our humanity or lack thereof. And this show was suggested by one of our viewers. Viewers, Thank you, Christina from Iceland. I hope you're still up and I hope you can call in. That would be really wonderful. And I would really appreciate call-ins today because this is a really important topic. We live on a planet and we're not the only creatures on the planet. We share this planet with our other animals, our earthlings and our sea creatures. And as the state of the world shows us, we are not treating them with human kindness nor dignity. So I want to start by, first of all, dedicating this show to my dog, Simon. I'm a big animal lover. Simon is not feeling well today. He's my 10-and-a-half-year-old chocolate lab. And if you have a picture of him up there, I would appreciate it. And there's Simon. He is the real healer at the Psychological Healing Center. And what's very interesting is that when I do my treatment, I would say 90 plus percent of the time people want Simon in the room. And why is that? Why would people come to a psychologist and really appreciate a dog in the room? And that's because dogs have something that human beings are losing rapidly. It's called empathy, the ability to connect, the ability to have unconditional love and regard toward other creatures. So I dedicate this show to Simon and my new puppy, Sarah, who's seven and a half months old, and she's a shepherd, and she's in boot camp right now because she's learning to be a service dog. And I want to talk a little bit about how much we use our animals as service dogs. Uh, and, and, and this is not a bad thing because a lot of people need emotional support. They need support because they have challenges seeing or they have challenges walking. And they would rather have a dog by their side than, let's say, Prozac in their system or uh, Xanax in their system or some sort of a anti-anxiety or antidepressant in their system. And because we are wired to connect, it is important that if we don't have that human contact, if we're living in a world of disconnect, if we're surrounded by people who don't have the ability to have empathy, that we, that we respect the creatures that have that ability to connect with us and provide with us with emotional nutrients. So don't you think they deserve our utmost unconditional love and care and, 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 and good treatment in, in the same way that we would treat another family member? You would think so. So I want to read a little bit from my book, Be the Cause, Healing Human Disconnect, right here. And I'm reading panel nine right now, and I want, I want to read a little bit into panel nine so you get a flavor of what I'm talking about today. So as you can recall from many of the lectures, many of the YouTube videos I've posted, the health of mother is interconnected with our well-being. When mother is healthy and feeds you the nutrients you need to develop emotionally and physically, we have more opportunity to flourish. As we attain more health in mind, body, and soul, 
we no longer feel trapped in our double dungeon of darkness and we may find that the relationship with Mother Earth improves. So I want to speak a little bit about our relationship to Mother Earth, which unfortunately, as we can see uh, by the condition of Mother Earth, we see that the lack of respect for Mother Earth, the animals, the environment, and so on, is directly connected to our own emotional health or lack thereof. So starting with human disconnect, what does this mean in terms of how we treat our animals? Well, let's take a look at how we treat our animals in a similar way as how we treat our families and our children. And so if we've been injured, if we've been disconnected from, then unfortunately we may want to relieve ourselves from this misery and project our feelings onto our animals. I'm going to read a little further into the book. Our mental health is a reflection of how we treat Mother Earth. Our suffering and fractured humanity reflect our collective state of mental unhealth and the extent to which we are poison, mind, body, and soul. When we are not well, we project our pain onto Mother Earth, of course, including our animals, and then proverbially drink from her polluted waters. As we become healthier collectively, we become more eco-friendly and no longer need to project our mental unhealth onto our, our environment. As we heal, Mother Earth can heal and replenish as well. The beauty of nature can then begin to reflect back our state of health. One of my favorite quotes in, 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 in my book is uh, Mahatma Gandhi's quote. Quote, the greatness of a nation can be judged by the way its animals are treated. So this is a call-in show, everyone. 323-843-2826. And we're talking about our inhumanity to the creatures who offer us unconditional love in a way that many humans are just not able to offer us in, in our day and age. So I want to read a little bit about um, Republic, Republican Jim Moran. I think this is his article here. Or Representative Jim Moran, District of Virginia, 731 um, is the article. And he, he is a co-chairman of the Animal Protection Caucus and senior member of the Interior and Environmental Appropriations Subcommittee, Subcommittee. So he writes about banning cruelty and animal crush videos, closing labeling loopholes on fur garments, strengthening prohibitions on animal fighting, and ending the slaughter of horses for human consumption. So he talks a lot about how we are obviously mistreating our animals. And um, he talks about our moral obligation to animals. And so when we are not well as human beings, when we ourselves suffer from human disconnect, when we are not connected to ourselves, we are, when we are disconnected from our family of origin, it would make sense that we would therefore disconnect from our animals and uh, treat them in, in similar ways, that sometimes in ways that we treat human beings. So again, this is a call-in show. I would like to hear from you. I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there who have animals, who enjoy their animals, some people out there who actually get comfort and um, uh, uh, deal with anxiety and depression by having an emotional support animal by their side. And I would like to hear from you. Uh, this is a different kind of topic than usual. And we will relate it back to the mind map, as I do relate back to the mind map very often on my shows. And we will be boiling it down to childhood wounds and how uh, the animal atrocity is a, in my opinion, a direct result of this. So some of the, um, the, the, the article that he, he, he refers to is um, Senator Republican uh, Jim Moran talks about recoiling at um, the way animals are being treated. 
the killing of wildlife. He says, as we learn more various animal species, mounting evidence is forcing us to reevaluate the stark division we once believe existed between humans and other animals. So as we know, we're discovering that humans and animals are a lot closer, even genetically, than what we thought and that we share common feelings and common pain. For example, shore crabs feel and remember pain. That's news to me. I did not know that. Zebra finches experience REM sleep. Very interesting, another fact that I was not aware of. Fruit fly brothers cooperate. Dolphins and elephants recognize themselves in mirrors. Chimpanzees assist one another without expe expecting favors in return, and dogs really do feel elation in their owner's presence. So, as you can see, our other inhabitants of our planet are sensitive. They have feelings. They have communities, just like we have communities. And if we disrupt their communities, as we are doing, as we are quickly changing the face of Mother Earth by cutting uh, uh, down rainforests and drilling in places and topically destroying our planet, we are disrupting their habitat. And as we disrupt our, their habitat for our own selfish reasons, it will reverberate. It will reverberate on us. It will reverberate, look around, when we see the, the dirt floating in our rivers and in our oceans. It's almost like our own karma is coughing back at us, and disgustingly so, putting in our face how we need to reconsider and we need to pay attention to what we are literally putting into our environment or not putting into our environment. And again, this is a call-in show, folks, so please feel free to call in 323-843-2826. So I want to talk about human disconnect and how this horror story comes about. So um, going back to Pope Benedict the Fourth and Reverend Billy Graham and His Holiness the Dalai Lama, they all emphasized the tradition of animal protection derived from their faith's directives to protect God's creatures. But somehow it seems like we have failed. The humane treatment of animals is supported by both secular evidence and divine imperatives. So we are not honoring that, obviously. So why aren't we honoring it? It's not really that difficult to see that if we can treat our children with abuse and we could treat each other with abuse, well then, why wouldn't we be treating our animals with abuse as well? So it starts with us. It starts with mother-infant disconnect, father-infant disconnect, family disconnect, community disconnect global disconnect. So can you see the parallel process between global disconnect, the damage of Mother Earth, the way we treat our animals, disrupting our own community, disrupting the, the habitats of living creatures, and so on. It's almost like we are looking at a hologram of who we are and reflected back to us is the state of our entire planet and in specific, the state of our animal kingdom. The treatment of animals can be a catalyst for more just and compassionate society, a society that has lost its moral compass. So if we can look at ourselves in the proverbial mirror and stare at our planet and stare at the bloody mess we've created in the slaughtering of our animals, we can, we can take that to mean a reflection back on us and our own lack of human compassion. So I want to mind map this a little bit more and start by, by saying that when we look at sociopaths, what do sociopaths uh, exhibit? They exhibit a lack of empathy. And one of the dangers of um, tracking symptoms. One of the key indicators of sociopathy in our children is this 
lack of empathy. I remember one of my patients, a uh, young 17-year-old man, came in to see me, and he was coming in to see me at the request of, of his parents. And this young man had absolutely no empathy left in him. It was really, really sad to see, and it was really sad because the parents couldn't understand why this particular individual was just so stone cold. Uh, but he was. And one of the things that he talked about is his cruelty to animals early in life. He would enjoy cutting the legs off of frogs and watching them limp. He would enjoy cutting off rats' tails or putting or burning or burning creatures and torturing cats. And you could see by his early behavior that he was already very cauterized in his emotions. So when we see these kinds of symptoms in our children, we know that they are humanly disconnected from, and their human disconnect is going to manifest in this kind of lack of empathy. So when we put it on a global scale and we, we, we don't connect to what exactly we're doing to the animals on our planet, then it is our own form. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's our own form of unconscious or unconscious or unconscious lack of empathy and bending in the direction of being cruel and sociopathic to the creatures that only deserve our love and kindness. I remember many years ago, I watched a movie called Earthlings, and I didn't know what to expect. And I watched this movie, and it was brutal. It seemed like the movie was a version of an animal holocaust, and it affected me deeply, watching cattle being herded and branded and tortured and watching chickens' beaks being cut off. And I'm sorry if I'm being graphic, but we do have to face the fact that this is how we treat our animals. It is brutal. It is unethical beyond belief. And so after watching this movie, I, I stopped eating meat for two years. I just couldn't do it. Later, I'm going to bring up an article about a plant-based diet as a solution for world peace. And um, maybe it's time for me to see the movie again because I, I am eating, eating meat currently. And I think in my ideal in my ideal world, I would love to embrace a plant-based uh, diet. So again, this is a call-in show. I want to know your opinion. Please do call in. Area code 323 843-2826. And we're talking about a reflection of our humanity as uh, expressed in the way that we treat our animals, specifically our inhumane treatment of animals. Now, think about this. If you, audience, had to kill your own cows or chickens or lambs or kill your meat, could you do it? Would it be easy for you to do? If you yourself had to cage them and brand them and skin them for your clothing, could you do it? Or is it better that we go unconscious and we go into a state of denial and just not really deal with it? Well, it's not too easy to do when watching Earthlings because it all comes up into your face and you see the reality of what is going on. So what to do about it? Well, somebody thinks plant-based diet is the answer, and I will read a little bit about this. Um, this is an article by, I know there's a person's name attached to it um, somewhere in here. Uh, I can't find the person's name, but if anybody's really interested, then... Just write me and I'll get you the, the author of the article. How we treat animals reflects humanity. Why adopting a plant-based diet is the solution for world peace. So the author writes, although I adopt a plant-based diet, I do not really request my friends and families to do the same. I respect everyone's free will. But he, he says... 
Please take a moment to think about how it ended up on your table, the meat that is. Please take a moment to think about the brutal murder behind it. Think about the loss of an innocent life due to human's desire and greed. Now, I'm not suggesting that every bite of hamburger or steak that you, you take is, is, is a brutal murder, but maybe in some ways it is. Because remember, I talk a lot about acts of omission and commission. Let me define. An act of commission is something that we do harm that we do to another human being or living creature. An act of omission is something that we don't do. So by allowing for our cattle, our chickens, and so on to be treated this way, we are really participating in an act of omission. So I do know that people are getting more conscious about this and they're now supporting free range chickens and organic beef and so on and so forth. And so I think we're headed in the right direction that if we're going to be eating animals, then at least give them a good life while they're alive and let them eat healthy food and let them see the sunlight and not be boxed up into cages. Unfortunately, this is not the way it's, it goes. Over 56 billion farmed animals are killed every year by humans. The author says, when I first looked at the figure, I really could not imagine. And the shocking figures do not even include fish and other sea creatures whose deaths are so high they are only measured in tons. And then he did a Google search, which revealed that every year there are over 100 million fish being killed by humans. And of course, as we know, animals are being tortured in laboratories and animals are kept as pets and abused by humans as well. So just because you have a pet doesn't guarantee, somebody who has a pet doesn't guarantee that that pet will be treated well. I was just talking to a friend of mine and he was tell- telling me about how his, quote, roommates, I was going to say friends, but doesn't sound like they're friends, how, how his roommates treat uh, their dog, a beautiful dog who obviously has a flea problem And instead of treating the fleas, they put a cone on the dog's head so the dog cannot even scratch himself. And then the dog doesn't see the light of day because the people are busy playing video games and they're disconnected. And the poor dog doesn't get walks and the poor dog doesn't get human uh, contact. And the poor dog isn't even on a, a proper eating schedule. So... So here, here's a great example, in, in my opinion, of humans that are disconnected. You can see this by the description of them. They don't eat properly, and they're constantly uh, playing video games, and they don't even have eye-to-eye contact with each other. So it just makes sense that they would be treating their dog in this, in this way. The animal massacre is the cruelest, longest massacre on the planet, and it's still ongoing. Most humans are still ignorant as to the devastation caused to these innocent animals. And our Mother Earth is our conscience, or should be. There is a simple way we can prevent the greatest amount of animal suffering, and again, he refers back to the plant-based diet. Now, I have been experimenting with plant-based diet, and there are some really amazing products out there that replicate the taste of meat and hamburgers and so on. And I have to say they're equally as, if not better, than the taste of meat. So I think for those of you who want to experiment with it, I think definitely, definitely um, worth exploring. So this is his solution to world peace, and he likens it to, if one day we could all be so compassionate and realize that killing and eating animals are terribly wrong, and he likens it to Nazi slavery, racism, sexism. Actually, if you watch the movie um, Earthlings, it is truly like watching an animal holocaust. So I could see how he would would put, put it in these terms. If humanity can grow so compassionate that we would never kill and eat a single animal, 
then I think we would arrive at a place where we probably wouldn't want to kill a single human being either. And everybody, this is a call-in show. Please call in 323-843-2826. And remember, we need to look at our own level of consciousness. And as we evolve into hopefully more conscious beings, and as we evolve in our hopefully ability to have more empathy, um, my, my, my hopes are that it will reflect in our treatment of animals who I've always loved so much. So let's talk about the human being and the plant-based diet. According to the way we are built, um, we are natural herbivores. Our, our intestines are very long, so we're not necessarily meant to digest meat. And we have hands that are not sharp claws, and we do not have sharp teeth that resemble those of carnivores. So it's possible that we are we weren't necessarily meant to be carnivorous. If you are wondering why people around you have obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, again, look at our diet. And of course, um, we can also refer to plant-based diet and sugar and carbohydrates as part of the cause of these diseases. And we can also look at meats and fats and dairy products that leave our arteries uh, clogged. If you consume a lot of meat and dairy, you are most likely to have health problems. There's been a lot of scientific evidence behind it, and uh, apparently he refers to a China study, which I have not read about, but for those of you who are more interested in the effects of meat and dairy on our bodies, uh, you might want to check that out. And I do want to hear from you. This is a call-in show, 323-843-843. 2826. And I want to know your opinion about whether you think that our level of consciousness or lack thereof will reflect in the way we treat our animals and how those two concepts are um, intricately interconnected. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the mind map and I want to talk about human disconnect and how it relates to this topic. So uh, if you would be so kind as to thank you very much. Um, the mind map is up. And as a lot of you know, we talk a lot about narcissism and borderline personality disorder and the five wounds of childhood and which are physical abuse, emotional, uh, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, and smothering when we are treated with unkind words and unkind deeds and neglect, then we are creating a human psyche that is lacking in what I call psychonutrients. And when we're lacking in psychonutrients, we don't, we don't feel that we're connected to our primary caregivers. We don't feel connected to ourselves. We don't feel connected to... Um, uh, uh, others, community, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when we are wounded, we will have reactions to these wounds, and these reactions to these wounds might include um, turning away, shutting down, becoming angry, becoming um, somatic, body sicknesses, tensions, and so forth. And then we will encode into the fiber of our being horrible negative core beliefs, horrible negative core beliefs like I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm stupid, I don't deserve to, um, to be alive. Okay, so when we have gone awry to this extent, it's no wonder that we will look for people and animals to project our feelings onto because when we become activated and when we get triggered by life, we fall into what I call the WTF, panels four, five, six, chaos, defenses, and breakdowns. 
And so our chaos in life is a result of all of the wounds of our childhood and how we reacted to them and eventually how we encode them into the fiber of our being. So how would that relate to animals? Well, I was thinking a little bit about this and I was thinking about the concept of kicking the dog, the concept of, of, of when, when we cannot take our anger out or we cannot express ourselves to other people, we might go sideways and literally kick the dog or kick the cat or hurt a lower creature, sometimes our own children. So being that children, animals are innocent and they don't usually talk back to us, uh, we tend to, in, in our primitive defense mechanisms, we we tend to project our feelings onto other creatures, if not human creatures, then animal creatures. And so that you can see on a macro scale, because I'm reminding those who've watched many videos that the mind map was originally called Join the Human Race, Healing Global Disconnect. So on a macro scale, what we're really looking at are macro projections. So they're not just projections onto your child or your husband or your wife or your friend or your lover or your coworker. Now we've got macro projections and we're literally projecting all over the human race and our mother earth and our animals. And I think we have a call in. So hi, you are on the couch with Dr. Judy. Well, Dr. Judy, this is Limitless Thinker. Hi, how are you? Good. It, it, my name's Rhonda, really, but I, I just, um, I have your book, and it's a wonderful book. Thank you and, very much. Oh, yes. And um, I've always loved you guys, and uh, I, I said, you know, I'm going to call in because I have a very unique situation that, that, that applies to your topic tonight. Thank you and for calling also, in. Okay. Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, I said thank you for calling in oftentimes when the shows are a little bit off topic because a lot of the shows revolve around narcissism and borderline personality disorder and passive aggressive. And this one is dedicated, as you know, of course, to animals. So, um, yeah, t tell me how you relate to this topic. Well, I, I've always loved animals, and I think some of us just... We, we just have an affinity from a very young age yes. for animals. Yes. I've been this way since I was, I can remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, now I'm 62. Okay. All right. So I, I moved um, two years ago to a, uh, to, at the time uh, there were three of us renting a house mm -hmm. and uh, it was chaotic. And I, um, and I was seeing my therapist mm -hmm. because, really, that's why I found you. Uh, you know, I had been a victim of uh, narcissistic abuse, okay. and I realized, wow, that's what that is, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, my therapist said, you know, Rhonda, you can move out on your own, and I did. And I found a an apartment, uh, which is it's sort of like uh, it, it's, it's sort of like a small little duplex. Okay. Out. Hey, way out in the country. Where uh, are you, by Virginia. the way? What what state are you Virginia. in? Virginia. Okay. Virginia. Mm -hmm. And can you repeat the name of the person after I get done? Because I would like to write that down. Okay. Uh, um, because I am in Virginia, and <clears throat> I'm. I, uh, the, oh, this, this okay. Uh, Jim. Yeah. Mor Jim Moran. Uh, okay. District. How do you District of Virginia, Jim Moran, M-O-R-A-N, Jim Moran. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much. Sure. So, uh, uh, so anyway, so I did, and and this is my to the months. This is I've been here two years. I'm in a very remote area. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, somewhat. Uh, most of it is farmland, acreage, mm -hmm. but there are many. Uh, uh, a different, uh, there's houses along and everything else, but it's sort of, it's out there. And um, 
the people who own this large acreage, they own acres and acres of land, mm -hmm. and they've probably, they're probably generational, so they, they, they have a lot of power. Yes. And when, when I'm, I like, uh, it's a married couple, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they've taken over from an elderly couple who, who uh, really had uh, <clears throat> been the ones that, that uh, really started the whole thing. But they're probably in their 50s. I'd say they're a little bit younger than me. Mm -hmm. And the wife is very, very nice. And she's the one that I always pay my rent. I'm very timely. Mm -hmm. I'm very clean. Mm -hmm. And I have my pets. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy. I've been happy about that. Mm -hmm. but, but, but what I started to notice was where I live, there's just three, there's like a few, uh, they're, they're, they're like little, little, uh, little homes. And then there is a, uh, a, a field, uh, and there's a feral colony, and there's a man who owns a business over there who's very kind to those feral cats, and mm -hmm. he feeds them mm -hmm. every day. Okay. And he can't, make, he can't make Sundays. So I, I, I went over to say to him, I've noticed there's a lot of cats here, uh, and, and, and it's really, I'm really concerned about them. And he said, well, he said to me, if you want to help me, I'm not here on Sundays. You can feed them. And, and that's what I do. Okay. And, what, and conse consequently, this has turned into uh, a very strange situation because the people who own the land, I was told by my neighbor, he said, uh, you know, so-and-so, we'll call him Mark, Okay. That's not his name, but he said Mark hates cats. And so, he so them. let me let me ask you something. Okay, so you have a compassion toward these cats. Now, um, I talk a lot about human disconnect and narcissism and so on. And being that you have been narcissistically injured, I want to ask your opinion. Do you think that people who have been narcissistically injured and have not healed from their wounds, in some cases, not in your case, may project their pain onto animals and not have that empathic connection and so therefore would, would be more prone to um, not caring or hurting animals. What do you what do you think about that concept? I, I, in in my opinion, I, I I might not tend to think that. And here's the reason. Okay. People who've been in abusive relationships, uh, it, it, some people are psychopaths. We know that. Mm -hmm. We know that that that, in, that that we've already we, we have the research now that we know that that some people are just psychopaths. Yeah. They do not have the ability to have empathy or compassion. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it, it, the thing about it is people who have a, th these people have an enormous amount of wealth and <clears throat> they have a lot of land and power in the area. And um, I, I, from, from a psychological standpoint, uh, what I think with him is, uh, I don't know how he was brought up, but probably quite well. Uh, he had everything he needed, and some people just have the potential to be bullies, yes. and 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 they enjoy, they get a, a pleasure out of that. Now, right. whatever 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 it is that creates that anomaly, I don't know. I I, I mean, uh, to be quite honest, I don't think I don't think a lot of people. We still study that. People are still trying to quite figure it out. But, 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 but the point is, uh, the, these malignant narcissists create so much damage, generally in, 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 in cases that we see quite often, and have a you, lot of power. And do you think that it could bleed over to animals, since the topic of today is, okay, they, it bleeds onto people. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right, right. I, I agree. But, and what do you think because of the concept? Um, what do you think of the concept that if we are to become, um, if we're to raise our consciousness as human beings and become more causal, let's say, okay, and you're reading the yeah. book, be the cause, right? If we're going to be the cause of more compassion, how do you yeah. think we should relate to animals, those that we eat, those that we care for? Any any opinion on that? What what should we do? Uh, uh, well, uh, what happened, uh, where I'm at, 
is I went vegan when I was, I think, 20. It was, I, I think I was 21, and I did it for a couple of years. And, and, and I, I really did. I went vegan for, for about two years. Okay. And then I don't know, like, you just, <clears throat> you know, it, I just, then all of a sudden, I don't know, I just kind of slid out of it. Yes. And it wasn't until just, uh, uh, just maybe about a few years ago, I started thinking about the cruelty of it all. And I said, you know, I I really want to, it's a very difficult thing to do because we have, uh, you know, all these, these uh, chains. Yeah, commercials, McDonald's, through. Carl's Jr. and so on. Thank if you. I, if yeah, I, I might. I was going to say that, but I thought maybe I better not say no, the No, I mean, you know? you know, it's the truth. It's all over the place. So if I, if I can ask you, and I, I know you've been listening to a lot of shows and thank you for always commenting and I appreciate all your comments on um, yeah. the chat, yeah. you know, the chatting that, that people um, write in on. And Wonderful so, people in your chat room, by the way. I Wonderful. know, I know. Very great, good. great questions. So I, I'm just going to, you can stay on, on, on the phone. I'm going to mind map this a little bit, and then maybe I'll ask you a question or two if that's okay with you. Sure, if that's what you want to do. Or do you and, have and anything I'd like, specific? I'd like to present a situation here. That, that's, uh, that's very unusual that I never expected I would be put in that situation. Okay. And, and uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, what so was that? No one. Oh, okay, sure. So what, what, what my point is is that we as a human race, we're disconnected from, and then when we're disconnected from ourselves, it's easy for us to become jaded and unfeeling and it's interesting because we depend on our animals to give us comfort and you know we have pets and so on very popular and I'm always asked to bring my dog into the room or at least 90 percent of the time I'm asked to bring my dog in the room and yet what we see statistically is that we're not treating the creatures who have the most ability to empathize and the most ability to be connected. We're not treating them with um, human, with any kind of respect or regard. On the contrary, we're, we're cruel to them. So from a mind map perspective, uh, perspective I'm, 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 I'm going through the panels right now and I'm looking at panel five as a defense mechanism. And when we start breaking down as human beings, what are we going to pick on? You know, what do cruel, uh, unhealed people pick on? Well, they pick on children and they pick on Projection. animals, right? Yeah. They, project, <clears throat> yes, they, project, they project their anger That's correct. onto those who are most vulnerable around Absolutely. them. Absolutely, right. And if you would be so kind, maybe share a little bit about your panel, One Wounds and Your Narcissistic. Uh, mother and why you think you became not not cruel to animals but on the contrary you you love them and you have a an affinity toward them uh, well uh, in my case uh, I, I've always been the saver of animals you know a rescuer okay uh, but I remember as a uh, ten year old I had a cat. And uh, my parents, my father was doing very well, and my mother was very submissive. But she, I, I, I believe, um, no question about it, there, 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 was, there was a lot of dysfunction in that family. And as a child, you don't know that because you're hostage. You're in a hostage situation. You're in a hostage situation. situation. Like and how did you develop? What I'm asking is if you, you've been wounded personally, and how did you, how did you develop compassion? So how come you became that lady who said, I'm going to feed that animal on, on these cats on, on Sunday? How come you're not that person that uh, chops the, the legs off of uh, a frog, so to speak? I'm getting it. I'm getting, I'm getting what you're trying to say, yeah. that, that, a, that a person can go either way Correct. Uh, in their development yes. of uh, how they would deal with that situation of how they've been treated by the people, the very people that they're supposed to trust. Yes. And uh, how do we develop into either the better, the better human being or yes. the worst? Exactly. Human being? The darkness and the light, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And the, the, it, the and you know, I can't answer for the darkness. All I know was uh, that uh, they were. Um, I, I, I felt uh, that they were uh, my connection with with uh, having s- s- that that unconditional love. Yeah. Okay. There, because there it is. I, yes. So, so coming from and a family that was, that was crucial because everything mm-hmm. was conditional in a narcissistic uh, uh, system. You know, it's all conditional. Mm-hmm. So, so, and and also um, the, the the whole thing about that was um, when I had this cat, uh, and uh, and I, I really uh, a parent has if they let you have the animal, they really need to teach the child. Okay, this is. And they have to be willing to invest with the child. Uh, we're going to get the litter. We, this is how we're going to feed yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And, but they can't even take care of the, their own children, let alone teach the child how to be a parent. Because when you're the caregiver of an animal, in essence, you're that, uh, you're that, that animal's parent, are you not? Um, that's exactly right. So, so I think that the, I think you 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 really help to illuminate the point that we have. We do have some choices, don't we? So you can either become the one that gets cut off, or the one that says, "Wow, I know what it feels like to be cut off. I know what it feels like to be injured, and so it'll feel actually right. wonderful for me to give back in the form of this way to these cats." Right. It, it, it is the only way that a person can find healing is by going outside of themselves to do good. Agreed. Uh, and, 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 and the, the, the opposite of, and, and the very, the very crux of the point that you're making about, about uh, a, a peace in the world, it's, it's unattainable so long as people uh, don't understand that, that uh, we're all in this together. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So I'm going to go well, on with with uh, a little bit more information and and thank you very very much for calling in, Rhonda. I'm glad to have finally met you because I've met you. <laughs> on, you're on, very on, you're uh, very cool and you're wonderful. Thanks. Really, you really thanks are. a lot. And and, and Walter is awesome too. You thank know? you. Really appreciate that. I'm sure he'll appreciate hearing that. And, uh, and so I'm just going to give a little bit more information about this. And um, please do feel free to call in and suggest shows and so on. And uh, thank you so much. So I will just go on with uh, a little bit more information about cruelty and how that's formed. Obviously, when we are not treated appropriately, it would make sense that we don't treat appropriately. Our animals, if you think about it, depend on us, especially if they are our our pets, especially if they are confined to, um, to, to farms and so on. It is our responsibility. It is our moral, ethical responsibility to treat them humanely. Uh, I want to get a little bit into um, uh, one, one way that ideally speaking, is a way to kill animals in a more humane way is the concept of kosher, which as many of you know, I'm Jewish and uh, brought up in a Jewish family, although not a kosher family. And kosher merely in this case means when it comes to animals is killing them quickly so that they don't feel pain. And so I personally like the concept very much that if you're going to kill that animal for food, it, it's, it's, it's really important that you create a, a way of killing that animal so that they're not in pain and suffering. So I think that anything that we could do to respect that animal, even if you know ultimately we're going to eat that animal and treat them in a humane way, uh, while they're alive, while they're um, in, you know, in, in a farm situation or whatever situation they're in. And one way I think that we could do this is by supporting farmers who are more humane to their animals, supporting uh, people who are able to provide their 
animals with cage-free situations and so on. So I think we can all be the cause in healing this horrific slaughterhouse effect that is taking place on our, our planet. And so with that said, I want to continue with the mind map and, 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 and go back to panel number six, which is that we're really having a big breakdown here. And the breakdown is reflecting back on us because ultimately when we, um, when we don't treat our pl planet correctly, and I said this earlier in the show, it reverberates back on us. And so we're in essence, we're poisoning ourselves by poisoning our animals and our planets and the pesticides and so on because they don't just wash away and the carcasses, they don't just wash away. These slaughtered animals end up um, back, back at us. They're just back at us. They float back up the river. They, um, they they create a bloody mess in our oceans, as many of you have seen with um, the slaughtering of, of dolphins and so on and so forth. And, and so we are interconnected. There's no way of getting around this. Uh, we have um, a, a duty to ourselves, the next generation, to preserve this planet. And I think it all starts with cleaning up at the causal level. The more healthy we are and the less we are disconnected and the more we nurture our children and our families, I think the higher uh, level consciousness we will build into ourselves and the next generation. So at this juncture, I wanna ask if there's anybody else that wants to call in and uh, comment on um, human disconnect and how it reverberates uh, on a planet, on a on a, yeah, on a planetary level, and how it trickles down not only to our children but our our animals. So, if there are no call-ins, then I will go to our song, and shrink that tune. So, the tune of today is called "The Animal Abuse Song" by Deborah Casimir. 2011. I look around me, but my eyes cannot believe the abuse of an angel who you chosen to deceive. All they want is food and water and some room to play, all your love and a cozy place to stay, a gentle touch. It isn't much, but you took it all away. You took it all away. Who are you to take it all away? Well, I think this particular verse speaks to the innocence of the animals that we are supposed to be responsible for and in that way we are deceiving them and really they they need so little to be happy just some room to play and and and, and a cozy place and good food and really some affection and that's what we all need whether we are animals as a matter of fact we're human animals we're not that different and so again, the parallel, we treat the, our animals the, the way we treat ourselves. It's got to stop. It's got to end. What, do you, what you do to man's best friend, can't you see? Can't you feel? The pain you cause is real. Left to die, don't you cry? Is your heart made out of stone? All they wanted was your love, but you left them all alone to suffer and die. Please tell me why. It almost sounds like child abuse here. I, I know I've read many stanzas like this that relate to human beings, and now we're just relating it to the animals. When our hearts are cut, when we have no empathy, when our hearts are now stoned, we are unable to love. We are unable to, to connect with other creatures' pain and suffering. They love, protect us, and help our wounds to heal faithful companions. Their love is not concealed. Yet you abuse them with their broken bodies. Will their broken bodies mend and their souls and their hearts? Can they ever trust again? They don't understand when you hurt them with your hands. It's the price they have to pay. Are you not ashamed? What have you to gain when you cause them so much pain? Who are you to take their lives anyway? It's a really powerful song, 
And I hope that those of you who've listened to this particular episode consider, at least consider, plant-based planet and teach your children the responsibility to love and care for animals. And please do heal your emotional pain so that you don't project them on our animals. You don't project them on Mother Earth. And don't forget to call in and ask for your 15-minute free consultation. The Mind Map video series is available for those of you who want to do the Mind Map process, the Mind Map system via video. We have wonderful therapists, PhDs, master's degree levels. We have a wonderful life coach, sliding scale basis therapy. And so our responsibility always, always, always is to be as healthy as we humanly can be so that we can pass that on to our children, the next generation, pass that to our animals and the world at large. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time. Good, good, good night, everybody. Thank you.